Hey, welcome back to Building Merc Craft, the series where we talk about crazy things that come into my head in regards to Minecraft and how to build them. Today, we're going to be talking about this guy right here. This guy right here, the Mob Spawner. More specifically, we're going to be talking about Zombie and Skeleton Spawners. Stay tuned at the end of the video, and we'll give you some tips and tricks to help make building and the overall experience with your mob grinders a little bit easier. We're going to be focusing on ways to get the most XP and the most items out of these mob spawners. So first, let's get a few basic uh, understandings of what uh, goes into a mob spawner and how it functions. So here we have a skeleton spawner and a zombie spawner. If we look closely, you'll notice that there's flames coming off of them and there's a mob twirling around in them. This means that they're activated and spawners activate when a player is within 16 blocks of that spawner. If they go outside of that 16 block radius, this spawner will not produce any mobs. We have 16 blocks indicated by these black and white squares. You'll notice if I go into the 16th block here, it is still activated. But you'll also notice because I'm outside of the radius for the skeleton spawner, that one is no longer activated. So if we go out just outside of that, that little radius, just outside of it, you'll notice that the zombie spawner again is inactivated. So when building your mob farms, your mob grinders, you want to keep that in mind. If you get outside of that 16 block area, your mob spawner is not going to be working in your AFK spot. So a little bit about how the mob spawner actually spawns mobs. When it spawns mobs, it looks in a 9 by 9 by 3 area for an empty space, which means there's no non-transparent blocks in that space to spawn a mob. If there happens to be a non-transparent block or somewhere where a mob can't spawn in that space that it decides to spawn, it will start the spawn timer over again. And the spawn timer for, for mob spawners is it will try to attempt to spawn a mob every 10 to 39.95 seconds. So about 45 or 40, correction, 40 every 40 seconds or so. But we, we're going to talk a little bit about how to get that number down to the, uh, the actual the 10 mark. So when it's looking, it will look for an area. So we, when we clear out the area around our mob spawner, we want this 9 by 3 area to be just completely cleared out. No, no, nothing there. But when it comes to two high mobs, this is where its feet are going to spawn. So we have to account for the rest of their body. That means that above the spawner, we have to clear out another block of area. That way they, are, they have full potential to spawn in this area. That's not the case when it comes to spider spawners and one high mobs like silverfish. Right? Now another thing with mob spawners is that when it spawns, it's going to look for other mobs of the type that it is wanting to spawn, in this case a skeleton. It's going to look for those mobs in a 9x9 nine nine area around the spawner. If it finds mobs of that type in that 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine area, it's going to start the sequence over again. That means another 10 to 39 seconds. So that's another thing. We want to try to get them away, the mobs, away from the spawner as quickly as possible. That way the cycle can start over again. We can start getting that many more mobs into our grinder. So when you're out exploring around your Minecraft world, this is probably the most likely what you're going to find as far as a mob spawner. So as you can see, this is not the most optimal area, and we have a lot of work to do in clearing all this out to make sure that we get the best rates and the best possible grinder uh, out there. So I hope you brought a pickaxe. So this right here is my idea of the best possible spawner mob grinder that you can get. You'll notice that off first we have two blocks 
right above the mob spawner. This prevents any mobs from spawning on top of the spawner and getting stuck up there, and thus destroying the rates. What you'll also notice is that right above, we have two more solid blocks. What this does is it prevents any mobs from possibly wandering in. Even though the spawner isn't going to spawn anything up here, just make sure that there's no caves or anything like that that could happen to have a skeleton walk in and destroy your rates as well. So that's four blocks above the spawner. Now below the spawner, you want nothing. Nothing at all. But you're also going to have to push it down an additional four blocks for a total of eight blocks below the spawner. The spawner is indicated by that iron block there, and then we just come down. The reason that I have this four block area uh, open and away from the spawner is because you don't want mobs that are coming down here or landing in the water and then bouncing up and down to accidentally go into that area where it's looking, that 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine area, and it's looking for mobs to respawn. Okay, So that's the reason for this additional four blocks under below. You don't have to do it, but your rates could suffer. So again, keep in mind, remember that the within this four block area, two above, one below, that's where the mobs are going to be spawning, and then they're going to drop down here. Now, a few things about the design here. We have water sources all along the back side, whatever the back side of your spawner is going to be. And they're going to be pushing mobs to this area, where we have two water source blocks on either end pushing into the center, which then moves mobs up this elevator. And you'll have, on your mob spawner, you can have sign, water, sign, you can do up to four water sources, but you got to make sure that they are water sources, not just one water source going down four blocks. Because what that will do, in essence, is push the mobs downwards, and that's not what we want. So just to make it a little easier, we have sign, water source, sign, water source, sign. Right? Now the length of the water elevator doesn't matter, but the drop does. Now... In order to kill both zombies and skeletons, we need to drop them 22 blocks, indicated by this block here. Now, we want to ensure that they drop 22 blocks and only 22 blocks. So if they're bobbing up and down in the water at the time that they fall, that could add an additional half block, thus killing the mobs once they hit the, the ground. And we don't want that. We want them to be a one-hit kill every single time, all the time. What we do here is we stop the water just one block short of the actual drop. And what that will do is that will allow mobs behind, existing mobs right up here, to push that mob off and he'll get a true 22 block drop. And he will then collect down here in our collection area, which is this block right here. And then we can just go ahead and kill them. So you'll see, if we spawn in skeletons here, what they'll do is they'll make their way to the water elevator, and then they'll gradually move up it, move up all the way up here to the top, where they will then push each other off. And down into the killing chamber. So that right there is my ideal skeleton zombie spawner. If you guys have any questions, go ahead, leave a comment down below, and I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. So this right here is how your mob spawner is going to be set up. We have an item uh, dispenser down below, and then we have our zombie or skeleton spawner up there. And as we're sitting here AFK, you're going to have walls completely all surrounding this thing. You want it to be as dark as possible. So when, as soon as the mobs spawn, they go down outside of the, the check area for the zombie uh, skeleton spawner. And then they start move, making their way up the elevator and down to the, the fall chamber. You see, it's already spawning once again. So you're not always going to get that perfect 10 seconds. But you want to try to get it as close as possible. When I did like a speed time test on these things, it was varying and there was really 
no way to exactly get to that 10 seconds every single time, at least not that I know of. But what these will, what these improvements will do is make sure that you can try to get as close to that as possible. So now a few tricks to help you guys when it comes to just making your mob spawners just a little bit easier to build and use. So when working with zombies, you're going to get baby zombies. And those things are just a nuisance. Even though they do provide more XP than regular zombies, they can clog up your mob spawner or your, your water tubes, and they can just cause a world of hurt. hurt. So what we do in this case is we have our normal water stream moving downwards, and we set it back three blocks from where it tees off, and then we lower this block down one, and then we go up. magma block. What that's going to do is all your adult zombies are going to catch that water stream and continue upwards, but your baby zombies are going to get stopped and they're going to fall down onto that magma block. You'll notice we have an adult zombie and a baby zombie going towards the tube. Now, sometimes they will catch that water stream and they'll make their way up, but most of the times they're just going to fall right down onto that magma block. And you'll see this guy, he's just hanging out and dying. You see now they did catch it, but eventually he's going to fall down and get that magma block. So it's not going to clog up your spawner. It's not going to clog up your water streams and they're not going to cause you a problem. If you want, if you're worried about items collecting over here, you know, items do spawn, despawn after five minutes. But if you're worried about that, you can throw a mine cart maybe uh, into a lava dispenser. We have a, a great super fast junk trasher you can throw under there. But that's that's uh, going to make your your mob farm just a little more, a little more better. When building the mob spawner, I know the hardest and most frustrating part is building up the water elevator. I found a cool little trick that helps me when I'm building this thing up. So what I'll do is I'll place my signs down first in this pattern right here. And that creates that little air gap, all right? And then place the water here and then work my way up onto this like so. Now you can either grab a whole bunch of buckets or you can do one better and just grab some ice, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we'll place our signs first. So go ahead and place all of your signs place in an ice block, and then just jump like this and break the ice, all right? And you'll do that all the way up, all the way up. So let's go ahead, jump back into creative so we can get our stuff back. And then, you know, you'll just pill her, pill her up, pill her up, fill in water, fill in signs. Water, signs, water, signs, water, signs, all the way up. And then... Or as you go up, you can just leave the ice blocks and then to make sure that you have uh, you have all the ones that you need, you can just make your way down, breaking ice as you go. So that's a cool little tip on just how to make your water streams that much easier to build up because I know it can be really frustrating trying to work your way up through a water stream, setting blocks at the same time, bouncing up and down. One last little tip that can help you out as you're clearing out your mob spawners is take a look in this chest you might find a torch all right and you can bring that torch and it will help you to shut the mob spawner off at least destroy it's not going to shut it off because you still see the particles but what it's going to do is it's going to make it so that mobs can't spawn and then you can come over into these corners and just set a single torch in these corners and that will make this room super super duper safe and as you're clearing out, you know, you're going to be clearing out all these blocks and you destroy the one that has the torch on it. Just go ahead and throw it right back in there. You know, move along and that will make it a whole lot easier and a whole lot safer as you clear out this area, which can be pretty time consuming. So you don't want to be fighting mobs and clearing out areas at the same time. So all you need, you don't need the one on the top. I've seen that before. That really doesn't do anything. Just four on the sides and then one in each corner. You don't have to go spanning torches all over the place. All right. So that's just a little pro tip there uh, to help you guys out. Um, you know, or you can just go buck wild with the torches. You know? Just make a, a torch sanctuary. <laughs> so that's a little tip to help you guys with your spawners get better rates, get better 
all around, mob grinders and whatnot. It's not a zombie pigment farm or anything like that, but anything that you can do at the first start of the game that will help you along, you know, it's always a must. If you like the video, go ahead, hit like, subscribe, share it with your friends. If you have any questions on anything that we've covered here in the video, please feel free to ask. You know, I don't mind answering questions. Uh, just, you know, want to want to be in the know. So, once again, this has been Merc Team Sergeant, and I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy. Thank you.